In the fifth installment of our Wi-Fi Air Expert video series, we'll talk about the role of Wi-Fi antennas and the important parameters to understand when selecting an antenna. It should be clear by now that Wi-Fi network devices transmit radio frequencies through the air as well as receive and decode incoming signals. As you can imagine, Wi-Fi antennas are a critical component of this communication process because they're used to amplify and radiate the outgoing signals as well as detect and gather the incoming signals. Some antennas are external to the device and visible, while others are inside the equipment itself. For example, Wi-Fi access points can have either external or internal antennas, while laptops, tablets, and smartphones have almost exclusively internal Wi-Fi antennas. Antennas are characterized by several parameters. The radiation pattern, which is the way the RF signal radiates from the antenna, the polarity, which indicates whether the antenna transmits or receives a signal horizontally or vertically, and the gain, which indicates the ability of the antenna to concentrate the signal in a particular direction. When selecting an antenna, the type of application and the topology of the building or outdoor area need to be taken into account. There are two main categories of antennas, omnidirectional and directional. An omnidirectional antenna, or omni for short, radiates in a 360-degree pattern, which provides the most coverage in all directions. As an analogy, you can imagine an omni antenna's RF pattern as the light emitted from a light bulb. Omni antennas are often used in office or home settings where wide signal coverage is needed. A directional antenna, on the other hand, focuses more energy in a specific direction. This antenna is more like the light from a flashlight. It's often used for indoor or outdoor point-to-point -point connections, such as between buildings. The most common type of omni antenna is the dipole, also called rubber duck antenna, which is standard on many Wi-Fi access points. This antenna radiates energy out perpendicular to the antenna in a donut-shaped 3D pattern with the antenna in the center. Antenna manufacturers provide an azimuth and an elevation chart to help visualize the radiation pattern of the antenna. The azimuth chart shows the radiation pattern as if you were slicing through the 3D shape horizontally. For our donut-shaped dipole antenna, the resulting azimuth shape is a circle. The elevation chart shows the radiation pattern as if you were slicing through the 3D shape vertically, which makes two lobes around the central point. Manufacturers also provide the antenna's beam width. The 3 dB beam width is the angle between the points in the main lobe that are down from the maximum gain by 3 dB, which equates to half the power. On our dipole elevation chart, the beam width is the angle between the two blue lines, which is about 75 degrees. On our dipole azimuth chart, the beam width is, by definition, 360 degrees. Antennas with large beam widths, like the dipole, provide lower gain but wider coverage whereas antennas with narrow beam widths, like the directional antenna, have a higher gain but smaller coverage area. Antenna gain is a relative measure. It measures how much of the power is radiated in a given direction compared to the power radiated by a reference antenna. Antenna manufacturers use two types of reference antennas, the isotropic and the dipole. If the gain is expressed as dBi, then the antenna efficiency is compared to an isotropic radiator, which is an ideal antenna, in that the power radiates equally in all directions, or basically a sphere. Gain measures are in dB, so an antenna providing a gain of 3 dBi is equivalent to doubling the power compared to an isotropic antenna. If instead the gain is expressed in dBd, then the antenna efficiency is compared to an ideal dipole. As we've seen before, the dipole radiation looks like a donut. To convert back and forth between dBi and dBd values, you can use the formula gain in dBi equals gain in dBd plus 2.14. So an antenna with a gain of 3 dBi has a gain of 0.86 dBd. Note that most vendors use the dBi notation. The last parameter to take into account is the antenna's Voltage Standing Wave Radio, or VSWR for short. It is defined as the ratio of the maximum voltage to the minimum voltage in a standing wave pattern. 
In simpler terms, it is the ratio measuring the power reflected from the device compared to the power delivered to the device. This reflection is caused by an impedance mismatch between the load, or the antenna, and the power source. Wi-Fi antennas have an impedance of 50 ohms. An ideal antenna has a VSWR of 1 to 1, which means no reflected power and perfect impedance matching. Most commercial antennas have a VSWR range of 1.5 to 1 to 2 to 1, which is equivalent to a power loss of between 4 and 11%. Okay, now that we've reviewed all the important parameters that allow you to understand Wi-Fi antennas, let's use that information to take a look at a sample antenna datasheet. This antenna operates in the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency band. Based on the radiation charts, we see that it has a directional antenna with a horizontal beam width of 55 degrees and a vertical beam width of 47 degrees. It provides a gain of 10 dBi, which means that it provides a power gain of 10 times that of an isotropic antenna. Its polarization is vertical, which means that if you're deploying a point-to-point -point link, you have to make sure that the antenna polarities at each end of the link match. Finally, the VSWR is 2 to 1 which results in an 11% loss, which is within normal range for a Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, time for a quiz. For a dipole antenna, what is the correct alignment for a floor or ceiling installation, vertical or horizontal? The dipole should be aligned vertically. If you look at the radiation pattern of the dipole, the coverage in the horizontal plane is 360 degrees, which means all equipment around it will be covered if you orient it vertically. What is the length of a dipole antenna? The length of a common dipole antenna is half the size of the wavelength that it transmits. So for Wi-Fi signals in the 2.4 GHz frequency band, the dipole has a length of 12 centimeters divided by 2 or 6 centimeters. For Wi-Fi signals in the 5 gigahertz frequency band, the dipole has a length of 5.5 centimeters divided by 2 or 2.75 centimeters. Note that antenna designs vary, but they're always either a fraction or a multiple of the wavelength of their operating frequency.